Hey guys, it's Andrew here from CMO Apps, and today we're going to look at Swift Optical Character Recognition so we can recognize your text and it in an image. If you've checked out one of my previous live streams, you know I was playing around with this recently, and what I found, I've tried three ways to get it to work, and I've found this one to be the best method. So first of all, what I was doing, I was trying to use core machine learning to recognize particular images with the exact same text every time. I thought that would be a great idea. However, that only worked 50% of the time. Then I tried a Swift optical character recognition library, which was easier to install than the library, which I'll show you guys today. However, the accuracy was only about 70 to 80% on the images that I was using. I did try and train it with a custom font that was in these images, but I still had the same results. So it might be great for easier to read text. However, for these particular images, it just wasn't working, which led me to use the Tesseract Optical Character Recognition Library, which got the text in the images 100% of the time. So that's what this tutorial is gonna be about. We're going to be able to recognize text in images and you'll be able to use any sort of images you want. It can be single characters in an image, it can be a string, it can be a sentence. So let's get into the coding. Okay, so now it's time to set up our project for optical character recognition. So what I've done here, I've created a single view application in Xcode. I've got nothing in it yet. It's just your stock standard project. And what we need to do is open up the terminal and we need to set up a new pod file so navigate to the project's location just by going CD. If you drag the folder into terminal, oops, let's just open that back up. It's going to navigate into that directory. And if you're unfamiliar with using pod files and libraries, check out my tutorial on this in the description below. Now we want to set up our pod files to do pod init. We'll let that run through. And now we've got a new pod file here. So we're going to open that up in whatever code editor you want. I uh, use Visual Studio Code. And we'll just drag this up the top. So we've got our pod file here ready to set up. And we've got the Tesseract OCR GitHub page here. So in this page, it will outline what it is, what it's using. And in order to install it, you need to go to the installation guide on the wiki. So what you need to do, copy this line here to add to our pod file. So under the comment pods for CMU OCR, which is our project, add that in there. Save that pod file, then close down the Xcode project. And we need to run pod install. And this is going to install the Tesseract OCR for iOS. It did take quite a while for me initially. I think my internet was bad at that point. So if it takes a while to install, don't worry about it. But it's been quite quick this time. So you'll notice here there's quite a few steps if you've used pod files before. To actually install this, it's more than usual. So not to worry, there's just a few more steps we need to do. So first of all, open up the new XC workspace project with our pod file installed. And we're just going to scroll down to the bottom. You'll see here we're working with Swift on iOS 9 and 10. And this also applies to anything after. We need to set enable bitcode to no. And this is only in our project here. The pods will already have it set to no. So if we go to CMU OCR, head over to the build settings, and you just want to search for bitcode. And it will come up here straight away. So we set that enable bitcode flag to no. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay. Now, next up, what we need to do is we need to import the test data folder. And it's important to set it up in a particular way. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And also, you need to use a particular file for your language. In this tutorial, we will be using English. But if you don't use a correct file and you try to run it, it will actually crash while trying to recognize text text. So if you go to the downloads list here and you download the English file from here, it's in the um, Tesseract data here, test data. It's not actually going to work the latest files. So I've got the file that works with the library here in the description below. You can download it. And I've also linked 
a page to the GitHub on the issues for this library, whereby it's telling you which version to use in case you want to use another language and you want to know why, you can check that out in there. Anyway, so if I go back to my finder, in my content, I've got this english.traindata. So we're going to copy that file here, go to our CMU OCR project, go to CMU OCR, and in here, not in Xcode, we'll go new folder. We'll name it test data, all lowercase. This has to be exact, otherwise it's not going to work because the library for the Tesseract OCR will be looking for this folder. Then put the English train data file in here that you downloaded from the description below. Then drag this folder into Xcode like follows. Leave copy items if needed and go finish. So by dragging it, you'll see it's a blue folder, which indicates it was imported as a reference folder, like it says here, instead of a symbolic group. Because if you just create a normal folder, it's a symbolic group. And what happens in Xcode, this folder structure doesn't necessarily match the file system structure. I mean, you could have 50 files in here, but they could all be in separate folders in your Xcode project because the Xcode project uses symbolic references, which doesn't match up to the file system. So by creating a folder manually in our project and dragging in here, it will actually be a reference folder. So that will all be correct. Otherwise, it's not going to work, guys. So just be careful of that. Okay, so now we've got our data folder in there. Also, you can download the image sets. So I've got a bunch of numbers, so zero through to nine. So we're going to be recognizing these numbers with the Tesseract OCR. So I'm just gonna to go to our assets.exe assets and add those images in now. So we've got zero through to nine, like you guys can see on the screen now. And this is what we're gonna test our optical character recognition on. So you can use any image you want with any text. It doesn't have to be one character. It can be words, sentences, and so on. But for the sake of this tutorial, this is what I'm using. So now that we've got that set up, our project's ready to go. So let's code the optical character recognition. So head on over to our viewcontroller.swift. We'll do import test OCR. I think I've spelled that right. And now in view did load, we're gonna do print running OCR. Then we're gonna do let image to check equals UI image. And in here we'll do named and we'll try just the number one. So this is going to be this one here the image with the number one on it. Okay, and it says here there's no such module named Tesseract. So let's just try running the application because sometimes it needs to do a quick build and clean to actually pick up the pod files. So I'll let that run through now and we'll see if that error disappears. And now we can see the apps running. So just remember that with pod files, when you do install them and you run import, it doesn't pick it up straight away until you do a build of the project. So you can either run the app or go to the product menu and do a clean and build. So now that that's confirmed to be working, up the top here, we need to do let tesseract colon g8 tesseract equals g8 tesseract. And then we'll do language. And in language, we're gonna do ENG for English. And then in our view controller, we're going to add a protocol called G8 Tesseract Delegate. And we just need to add one function in here, which is should cancel image recognition. And in here, we're going to return false. So essentially what this function does, if Tesseract's running the image recognition and you need to cancel it for whatever reason, you return true in here. So for example, maybe the user closes the app or goes to another screen in the app, 
this is where you would cancel the image recognition because you don't want it to be running in a background thread slowing down your app. All right, so let's get back to the image recognition. So now we've got our image detect here. What we do, we do tesseract.image equals image to check. And then we do tesseract.recognize. And this will run the OCR recognition on that image. And to actually get the text, we simply will print it to the console. And we'll do print the text is, and in here we'll do tesseract dot recognize text exclamation mark will unwrap that optional and finally two more things in view did load we need to set the tesseract delegate to self so tesseract dot delegate equals self and then we'll do tesseract dot character whitelist equals zero through to nine so this is essentially saying the whitelist is we only want to check our image for any of these characters here, which is zero through to nine. So let's run our app now and see if it can recognize the text in this image, which is number one. So boom, here we go, running OCR, the text is one, which is correct, because our image contains the number one. So if we do it several times, We'll try some other numbers. So we'll do the one, we'll try three, we'll try six, and we'll try nine finally. And we'll change these here to image to tech equals three, six, and nine. We'll change image to check to be a variable, and we'll just change that as the code is running through. Let's run that now and make sure it can recognize our other numbers. So we can see we've got one, three, six, and nine, all straight away, instantly, quite fast. So this OCR is one of the best image recognition libraries for iOS, so I can highly, highly recommend it. And you can do several different things, like we have a whitelist, which improves its accuracy even more. You could make a blacklist to say, hey, Tesseract, these are characters we shouldn't recognize. The whitelist are the characters we should only recognize, or you cannot have a whitelist or blacklist at all. And you can do this with any sort of images and any sort of text. So it doesn't have to be numbers, it can be letters, it can be a sentence, it can be a paragraph and so on. So you can download the source code for this tutorial below and don't forget to subscribe and like if you'd like to see more tutorials. Until next time, guys.